the web for what it is today. Like, we are all using it, we all have been using it, and it really is pushing for the internet to use if it's in the world. Like, APIs is not a new technology, it has been used way before the internet comes, and the internet has pushed it even further by increasing the power of how machines can communicate with other machines. But all this mobile and wearable device that is coming out, and all this movement that is going on right now, we're pushing even further. We, as developers, have been using APIs, have been using Rails, and a lot of other tools, and other libraries, to help us to do great APIs, and to great APIs with a lot of services. Uh, my name is Joe Mora. I'm co-founder of Jimbo Pro. We are a SaaS for gamification. Uh, this is how you can find me on Twitter and internet in general. And today we're going to talk about AMS, API, Rails, and an adapter. And everything will be tied up by a lot of stuff. So, yeah, I, I try to make a lot of stuff the, the short part. Uh, I probably should get started with it. So for those that doesn't know, after Brazil. And yeah, Brazil is awesome. <laughs> Actually, this is how far I am from home right now, just to talk to you. It's like a 10 hour flight. And what is funny is that every time, every time that I go to uh, every conference in the world and I tell them that I'm from Brazil, everybody asks me about all the streets and lakes and all this stuff. Is this really working? Things, 
But that time I really fell in love with Activa Modern Serializer and Rails API. Uh, for those that doesn't know, I'm one of the contributors for Rails API and Activa Modern Serializer. We are doing an amazing job. I talked a little bit about it from the end of the talk. But first to get started, let's talk a little bit about API. API stands for Application Programming Interface. And I would like to to dive into the word of this, that's the definition, that it's interface. Like, we are so worried nowadays about interface in general. Like, everybody knows how much user experience is important to an application. Everybody knows how much a user interface is important and how much it can really take you apart from a bunch of other applications. But what we usually forget is that APIs are also a kind, a kind of uh, interface because they are users that are going to use it, or your customers, or your developers, or your team, or other developers that are going to integrate with it. So yeah, we should be putting the same effort and the same amount of uh, technology and effort in developing the APIs as we do with usual user interface and user experience. Because APIs can really be one of the great assets of a company. If we take a look at Facebook, for example, Facebook is the major and the biggest uh, ever made social network in the story of humanity. And I don't know if you realize how much the API, or their API, helped them to achieve it. Like nowadays, we are using to have sign in with Facebook groups all across the web. Like, we assume every time that we build a new application that we are going to integrate with Facebook. So yeah, their API has, has been like a major tool in their expanding process. But it also can be one of the greatest liabilities of a company. Because if you don't do, if you don't write a good API, it will definitely come back to hunt you. You're going to have to invest money to fix it, you're going to have to invest time and people to fix it, and you'll probably give a bad experience for everyone that's going to integrate with you. So the question here is, how do we build a good API? What is the definition of a good API? Well, in order to define a good API, there are eight concepts that we have to use. Those eight concepts is what define if you have a good API or a bad API. These concepts are performance, scalability, reusability, evolvability, documentation, it must be easy to learn, it must be easy to use, and mostly, it must be hard to misuse. This eight concept is what defines if an API is a good API or if it's a bad API. So we have to start to worry about this. Well, there is a great talk about uh, that Joshua Blanche gave to uh, Google in the Google case talk on 2010. And he made like this code that it's really precise and really will help you to achieve a good API. An API should do one thing and do it well. So this is the this is why we even to start about thinking APIs from now on. An API should do one thing and want to do it well. But if we take a look at the technical side of it. We have a lot of tools to build APIs. We have a lot of tools that might help us to build APIs. And I would like to talk a little bit about why Rails is the best tool to build APIs. The thing is, I would like to talk about it, but it's not. <laughs> yeah. But it's a great one. We know that though, there's no super bullets, there's a lot of downsides, but Rails are great too, and I will show you how we can use Rails to develop a great API. So, the things about why, why Rails are great too, is because if you take a look at that eight points that I pointed out for you, that performance is scalability, hard to use, easy to use, hard to misuse, how they are deeply related with conventions. If you follow conventions, you probably have performance. It's probably easy to document. It's probably easy to use, hard to misuse, and easy to scale. So they are all deeply, deeply connected with conventions, and conventions by itself is deeply connected to Rails. Rails is all about conventions. So yeah, this is why Rails makes us yes, agree to develop APIs. But I have to agree with something. 
that Rios is indeed reboot. So yeah, Rios has a lot of parts that you might not want to use, and a lot of parts that you might want to use when developing uh, an API. So this is why Rails API exists. How many of you have already used uh, Rails API? Alright, cool. What Rails API does is uh, it removes the parts of the Rails that you don't really need and don't really want when developing the API, and it brings new functionality that you might use and might want when doing the API. It's pretty much simple. And one of these functionalities, one of these projects that Rails API has built in is Active Model Serializer, also known as AMX. Uh, the easiest way to, def to, to define Active Model Serializer is that it brings convention over configuration to your data. So it follows the Rails concept, it follows the Rails logic, uh, and it also is based on conventions. But it adds a layer in your Rails application that will handle the conversion of an object that you have into a JSON output. So I will show an example of what is a serializer uh, on a Rails application. This is what a, a serializer looks like in a Rails application. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through it. So first things first, you have the definition of the serializer, no worries. Uh, we have a line that defines the attributes that we want to return as JSON. Uh, in this case, title, body, and comments count. But the thing is, comments count isn't an attribute of post. So we'll, it's a virtual attribute that we will create on the serializer. So this is the method that counts the comments of a post and, and uh, gives it back as a JSON. So once that you have this serializer in your Rails application, this is the output that you're going to have. So you're going to have a JSON output every time that a, a post is returned to your client and you have an ID, title, body, and comments count. Pretty much easy, right? <coughs> Alright, so we have been using AMS, uh, I think that some years from now. The first version that was kind of stable was the 08 version. Uh, how many of you use the 08 version? Alright, we have the 09 version. How many of you use it? All right, cool. And we also have been working on O10 version. How many heard about it? All right, cool. So yeah, we are working really hard for several months in the O10 version, and I would like to give you a sneak peek of it and the great features it has and it will have. And you're gonna love it. I'm sure about it. So the first feature is we implemented an adapter pattern. So what it means, right now Adapter's partner is it, a part of Active Model Serializer that describes how the attributes will be serialized. It means that if you would like to use Active Model Serializer to return XML, for example, you could build an adapter by yourself and integrate it with Active Model Serializer. So it makes it easy for people that want to use other formats other than JSON to use Active Model Serializer, and if they want to contribute, building uh, and contributing to the project itself by building uh, new adapters that don't work only with JSON. So yeah, it was a big change and a small one. So yeah, quick win for us. So the second feature that I would like to talk about, and this one it's really cool, and I really would like to uh, focus a little bit about it because. I don't know how many of you have heard about it. It's JSON API. How many of you have heard, heard about JSON API? All right, JSON API is a standard for building APIs in JSON. Uh, so it started back some, some months ago. Uh, some of the brilliant and greatest minds and friends that I have and I know have been working on that. So you might know Steven Klavnik and Yehuda that have given another talk on another conference and other room. So they start building it and there's a lot of other brilliant people that are working on it right now. Uh, the concept is that they want to define uh, a standard form to build APIs and JSON APIs and it brings all the good things that conventions always bring. So you don't have to worry about negotiating uh, it with your other 
employees and the other developers. You don't have to, a front-end developer don't have to worry about how to integrate it or which kind of, which fields will be returned for API. So yeah, it's really cool. It really makes it a lot easier to integrate APIs and to build APIs and make it a lot faster. We really believe in that. And we are kind of glad to announce that we already implemented the JSON API release in candidate 3 in this new version. And the one the one day old version is supposed to be released on May 21, and we are already working on that. So after the release, we're probably going to also merge it in with Active Models Realizer. And it's really cool because if you choose to use JSON API, you could build APIs way faster, follow a path that you anyone in the world would know what it's about. So yeah, it's really cool and we're really proud of it. The next two features that I'm going to talk about are some features that uh, I'm, uh, I'm pretty proud because uh, I'm the one that made it and I really think that it can really help a lot of developers out there because it helped me um, on increasing and improving my APIs back then in the world code. So the first one is cache. We have implemented a built-in cache functionality inside of Active Model Serializer. So it's a totally new implementation right in first patch. It's optimized and it's followed the Rails completion. I will show you a sneak peek of how it works. So this is a usual serializer, a post serializer with a title and body attribute. Let's say that you would like to cache it. All you have to do is add a cache method, and it's done. All you have to do is add a cache method in serializer, and any part of it, and it will be cached and it will be used, reuse it. But you can go further than that. You can even specify a key for your cache. Or even further than that, you can use other Rails conventions. So you can pass expire in three hours, and this cache will be automatically expires, expired every three hours. And it's really cool. So let's imagine that this serializer has a post controller. So this is a post controller with an index definition, usual stuff. So every time that a user goes to the index method, it will generate the crash, as we saw with the post serializer. But the coolest part is when the user goes to the show method, the same cache will be reused across every, every action that uses the post serializer. So yeah, it's a really great optimization and might make a, little, uh, a lot of difference on your application API. Uh, the next, uh, the next uh, feature that I would like to talk about, and it's another really cool feature, is Fragment Cache. Fragment Cache can really save you a lot of time. Uh, what it does is, it, oh, sorry. What it does is, it always follows the Rails conventions. It's always, it always, it, uh, yeah. So it also follows the Rails conditions, and it's built to cache specific attributes on a serializer. I'm going to show you a sneak peek of the two. So uh, take a look at this post serializer. It's a little bit more complex. So we still have a title, a body, and a context count attribute. But this time we are overriding the title attribute, and we are overriding the comments count attribute, and generating them inside the serializer. So if you take a look at those two methods by themselves, you're going to see that the title, despite of being a modification of the usual title of the, of the post, it definitely is cacheable. But the second attribute that counts how many comments it has, it's non-cacheable, because it can change pretty quickly. So how can we cache one part of this realizer and get the other outside and still have an improvement of the cache implementation? So right now, all you have to do is add cache on title, also using the Rails convention. And you can always, you can always use the other right, so accept comments count, and it's okay. So this is what you can do with you put everything together. So you can define a cache, you can use a key, you can use all the Rails method like it's powered in, and you can also use it to make a fragment cache. So yeah, it's really cool, and it's a really uh, cool two features that tie together really well. But uh, there is this famous phrase that we got the trust and how the others bring data. What about how it can be problematic? How about if, how it compares with the old version of Active Model Serializer? Because this version was totally rewritten. It was written from scratch. 
So, well, I made some benchmark. So, if we take a look at the oldest, at the left version, the online version, this is what we look at like a benchmark that I made with a 10,000 times loading and hazing serializer. But if we take a look to the new version, uh, we have a drop of uh, significantly, drop of 10 seconds, obviously. And if we use cache, we're going to see like almost 15 seconds drop. So, yeah, it's a really great increase of performance. And it might really help our APIs. So, there's a lot of work in progress, too. Like, um, we still have a lot of things to do. We are really working hard to implement fat coach so we can push forward uh, to have even faster response when load a lot of cache together. We are still working on a benchmark implementation that will help us to also keep track of the performance issues uh, whenever we can. And there's one more thing I'd like to talk about that is really cool. Uh, and I'm, I'm not sure if I, even I believe it. It's that we made it, uh, we have just released AMS uh, open like today, early this morning, just because of RailsConf. So you are all able to use this as you can. So you are all able to update your gems, your update your applications, and to use Active Model Serializer. I would like to try something new here. So if you would like to tweet about it, you can use the hashtag AMS10. Yeah, it will be fun. Like a lot of people, whoa, what is AMS10? Let's check it out. <laughs> so yeah, use a uh, hashtag AMS10 alongside with RailsConf, and the people will be, will be concerned about what it is, and you should check this out. Um, so we have released it this morning. You're already able to update it. Uh, we still have a lot of work to do, but yeah, it's really great. And actually, I have another thing to talk that it's really cool. Uh, not sure yet, but I think that I should share it with you because I'm really excited about it. We have been touched with Rails Core team for some weeks from now, and we are really excited about the possibility of AMS uh, join the Rails as the tool. So you would be able to use it in Rails, any Rails application. Uh, it's not uh, for sure yet, but we have been going through it, and it seems that it's going to happen. And I'm really glad that I shared it with you, so we can make it push forward and make it happen. Uh, I also would like to give special thanks for the whole AMS Rails API team. They are amazing. Uh, specifically, uh, those four amazing guys that I have been closely working with for the last months. Uh, there is a lot of other contributors, a lot of amazing developers, and amazing people that help this out. But those four people were really amazing. They really have been helping me in building this. Uh, actually, I have been learning for them a lot, and uh, I think I think that I, I ended up going too fast. Yeah, I was planning to take like another 15 minutes, but uh, I think it's great because we have some time for questions. Uh, I would like to thank you all for being here and letting you know that it was amazing to talk to you guys. Thank you very much.